Praise God. I'm Pastor Melvin Graff, Associate Pastor here at the Philadelphia Christian Church of Ministry. We come on behalf of our Memphis Central 3400, Friends Lane, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213, in the heart of the Bel Air, the Edison uh, neighborhood. On behalf of our Pastor Bishop Clarence R. Aston Jr., we would really like to welcome you out there in Facebook and YouTube land, along with those in the Congress that we receive the Lord Jesus Christ at this morning. Um, we will begin our service with the scripture. Scripture reading will come from Psalms 121. And I'll be reading to you King James Version. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not so neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee for all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out, and thy coming in from this time forth forevermore. At this time, we're going to call Pastor um, Thomas Brown to come with the prayer. Let us bow our heads. Father, we come in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just giving you the praise and say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for those that have assembled ourselves here this morning. Father, we thank you for those that's on their way, those that uh, had a desire to come, but for some reason not able to just praise your name in Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will have um, open hand followed by the panel of their welcome. Jesus is the light, the light of the world. Jesus is the light, light of
first given honor to God, to our pastor and first lady, Kanta Haskin, our visitors. But we'd like to thank you all for coming out and praising the Lord with us today. And to those that are watching, enjoy the service. God bless you and have a blessed day. And a birthday for this week. And the song we're going to sing, okay, to our visitors. Oh, we love you with our love, 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 love. Church will be here 
And on the 20, what did I say, 28, the 27th, this is bad, but old people, you know, y'all always have to put things in front of you to write it down. But on the 27th, I will be Bishop Art Robinson in the Bring It to Life and Ministries. So we're looking for a hot, excited time. So we invite you, visitors and those persons who are this, this weekend on FaceTime and later on YouTube, come and visit with the Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries and help us celebrate our clergy. They need to be celebrated all the time. More than we celebrate the sports players and the entertainers, celebrate these men and women of God who are delivering God's message to us, helping us and guiding us in the direction, keeping us on the path of righteousness. So we celebrate you and we will be celebrating on that night. On October 30th, on that Sunday right after us, is our celebratory clergy appreciation day. So that morning, we will really be saluting our clergy. Now that afternoon, Salvation Restoration Missionary Baptist Church, who is right downstairs on Minnesota Avenue at 3 p.m., they're celebrating um, National Cancer Month, Breast Cancer Month, and they're having a program there at 3 o'clock, and they're inviting us of all who are listening to come out and, and join in with them, find out about what's going on with breast cancer, and find out uh, um, so they'll have things you have people that uh, can testify of their survival and their um, victory over breast cancer. So do keep that in mind. Um, we are, of course, are keeping Bishop uh, Pastor DeShields in prayer. He is coming along nicely and probably better than a lot of people thought he would be coming along. So we praise God for that. And we praise God for Mother Hopkins, who's home. She's doing well. She still has her problems with her legs, but she's coming along. And any other sick and shut in that I have not mentioned? We're glad Sister Odette is here today. And we thank God for all of you. We praise God just for life. As long as we are breathing, where there is life, there is hope. God bless you. All the comments and announcements. Now, let's put our hands together for our Bishop of Christian Class, Father Bassett Jr. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for being God and God all by Himself. Amen. Good to see so many of you this morning. Good to see the visitors coming. Amen. I'm sure they're here on purpose for the uh, dedication uh, later on this afternoon, later on in the service, uh, later on in the service, but we thank God for them for being here today as a support, amen, to one of our members, especially in the person of Sister Rose, amen. So we thank God for her, amen. Announcements, please be mindful of those announcements. Amen. You'll be hearing them over and over again until we get closer to the revival and also until we get uh, closer going out on the first Sunday and uh, November to Community Church of Cherry Hill. We'll be with the Cherry Hill. Amen. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to doing that. Amen. We thank God for our leaders yesterday. We met our leaders met. Many of them, and some who were not, came to our meeting, and we thank God for that. Uh, a long meeting, but we have not had a meeting in since 2019, leadership meeting, so we caught up on a lot of things, amen. And that tells us we still got a lot of things to do, planning for the rest of the year, and planning for the beginning of the uh, calendar year of 2023. Don't you know the year is almost over? This year is almost gone. And you need to ask yourself, what have I done? Amen. Amen. This calendar year, have I been a blessing to somebody? Amen. I've been trying to help somebody. You know, um, 
these are things that I know that we all go through some things, but uh, if you're going to be uh, people of God, you've got to love your brothers and sisters, and you've got to try to help somebody along the way. Amen. Amen. So we're going to continue, amen, in our service. Uh, we're going to continue in our service. This is prayer time. Amen. And we ask you now to take time, if you do know the power of prayer, amen, then pray. Pray. Set where you are and ask the Lord, amen, to, uh, if you are a believer, especially if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, then your prayer won't get off the ground. Your prayer will not get off the ground. You're wasting time. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, pray. There's something that we all stand in the need of. We can be better people, amen. We can, and we want things better for our families. We want our health and our strength. All these things that we can ask the Lord. But then before you go through all that litany of asking God this, make sure you thank Him. What do you mean, Pastor? Make sure you thank Him for waking you up this morning. Make sure you thank Him that you got your right on mind. Make sure you thank that you're able to come to this place at this particular time. There's no accident that God has you here. There's no mistake. You're here by the divine goddess of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank God for just being here. Amen. In his presence. Amen. Amen. So with that, we're going to ask now that we uh, take a moment, listen to our music department, and when we come back, then we're going to come back with our intercessory prayer. And we're going to ask Deacon Charlie this morning to give us an accessory prayer. Amen.
Father, we come to stand before you this morning to give you all the honor and give you all the praise. You are a omnipotent God, always on time. We thank you, Lord, for allowing your people once again to assemble in this place this morning just to experience another day another bright day that we will experience today but we will never see again we thank you lord for your people lord that set before you giving you all the praises that you deserve and we thank you lord that whatever that you have planned for us lord we stand in the need of and we just thank you for being so good to us. We thank you, Lord, that you always, always have a plan for us to go by. We thank you for so many things, and we thank you for all things in the name of Jesus. So today, Father God, once again, we thank you for anointing you your people today, Lord. We thank you for opportunities because each day is another opportunity that you have a chance to experience. So as the service go on for the rest of the day of the day, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you keep us. You keep us under your under your holy will, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. So we thank you, Lord. We love you and we magnify your holy and precious name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can Charlie. Amen for that fervent prayer. We're going to move now on into our communion. We ask that you abstain from walking. Uh, this is a sacred time for the believer, for the Christian. The Bible tells us that as often as we do this, we do it with members of Jesus Christ. And we ask you to take with us at the communion. If you were given a pack, a uh, cup, when you came in, we ask you to prepare yourself for that. Sometimes those little things are hard to open, so you better get a head start, amen. You better get a head start, but we ask our Facebook partners, those who are tuning in from Facebook, YouTube, amen. If you don't have, amen, uh, the necessary juice and crackers, just get some water and a piece of bread, amen. Amen, just get water and a piece of bread. That's true. This, is, this is to administrate uh, the uh, life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to now turn this part over to us, to Robert, Reverend Dr. Robert Franks. He's going to carry us through. And we ask you to, again, just be mindful and, then, uh, and thank God that you're able to, thank God that you're able to be here just to participate. And, uh, to God, to God, and give God his glory, amen. amen. For to God be the glory, amen. Dr. Robert Frank. Praise the Lord this morning, saints. Amen. amen. Let us give him the glory this morning as we come into God's holy sanctuary, amen. We come into God's holy sanctuary to give him the praise for he woke us up this morning. He didn't have to do that, but he did it anyway because he thought it was necessary that we partake of this day. And we're so glad that you are assembled here this morning, that we are able to once again celebrate the first Sunday, and we do that by the practice of communion, Holy Communion, amen. All of you should have uh, a communion pack in your possession, and if you don't, and if you desire to take communion, all you have to do is raise your hand, and I shall see that you receive one, amen. But this is our communion service. And as we so often do in our communion service, we read our church covenants, and you should have one of those in your possession. And if you can stand, all that can stand, would you stand now, please? We 
I will recite the church covenant. I will read the minister's portion and you will follow with the congregational response. Let us begin. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. covenant with one another as one body in Christ. To promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines. devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. watch over one another in brotherly love. To be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. Altogether, we more engage than when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Communion is a very sacred time where we come to do that which the Lord has commanded us to do. And we find the instructions for that in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. And I will begin with verse 27, chapter 11, verse 27 of the book of 1 Corinthians. It reads this way. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. It says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die. God has given us instructions that we should examine ourselves before we partake of the communion table. He wants us to do a self-inspection that we make sure that we harbor no heart in our heart, no offenses against our brothers or our sisters, and that we do for sure worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to know that this table has been prepared for us that we might always remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has laid down for us. That he gave his life that we might be set free. That he died and shed all of his blood. His flesh was torn. His head was crowned. His hands and feet were nailed. And his side was pierced and the blood ran down. And he died for you and he died for me. He was taken down from a cross and buried in a borrowed tomb. 
but he did not stay dead. Because on the third day morning, God his Father raised him from the dead, and now he lives forevermore. And because of that, we recognize that each and every time we partake of the communion table, we recognize the shed blood and the torn body of Jesus Christ. And that's why we do this. So it's not for form or fashion. It's not so that we can uh, perform some sacrament that nobody else is doing. We do this because God has instructed us to do it. So as I continue on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says in verse 23, it says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. So if you would now open your communion packs, you'll find the first layer of it has a wafer inside of it. And that wafer represents the torn body of Jesus the Christ. That wafer, if you would take it out now. It says when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And they all ate together. After the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, and they all drank together. And he goes on to tell us, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. And they all went down from that place, praising God and singing to the glory of God.
God for the celebration of communion service. Amen. And now we're coming to that point where we're getting close to the preach word. For if we come to church and have not heard a word from the Lord, then we do ourselves an injustice. So we're getting ready for that time. Each and every first Sunday, uh, we have the privilege of having our bishop, our pastor, preach the word of God on that day. And we're expecting the same today. Amen. So I'll have um, our worship leader come back now. Amen. Scripture reading will come from Psalms 10. I'll be reading the first five verses again. That's Psalms 10. We give that signify by saying amen. amen. One more time for those for Psalms 10. And the word of God reads, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hast thou self in time of trouble? The wicked in his pride do persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the vices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, and blessed the covetous, covetous, whom the Lord aborted. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. That judgment are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffed at them. The Lord is always blessed to read them his word. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. We thank Reverend Garrison, Reverend Dr. Garrison, for the reading of the scripture. And now, before we have the preach word of God, we will hear from our music ministry, amen, as they render one or two selections, and then we'll come back uh, with the preach word of God, amen. Amen.
praise. Amen. And we thank God for all the, these preachers. Amen. And deacons, deaconess, and ushers, and physicians. Which, again, I thank God for all of our visitors. Amen. Those, uh, again, once again, the family. Witherspoon, amen. She's the mom. Well, uh, God, later on in the service, later on in the service, and the father is here as well. Kyrie Fleming, I believe it's so. Uh, yes, Kyrie Fleming, amen. She's here. Good to be here. Amen. Get his name out of the air as well. We thank God again for all of you guys, people being here. Uh, time. Uh, moving in. I don't want to be uh, too long and be late, but we still have another portion of our service to go after this portion is over. But we also want to acknowledge our Facebook partners. They're with us every Sunday. They're here tuning us in on the, um, the uh, air. Amen. Watching the broadcast. Our Facebook partners as well as our YouTube partners who will see this uh, broadcast later on. So, uh, for those who want to refer uh, this portion uh, of the service uh, to your friends and relatives, you can pull this up maybe uh, and within about 48 hours on the air on YouTube. But I still think you can get it on Facebook later on as well. Am I right about that, Sister Askins? Amen. So you can still see it today if they want to see this. Amen. Amen. Uh, a uh, little night where you at. Give, give a little shot uh, with that camera around for the family. Let them see this family, how they turned out. Y'all looking toward that camera. Let them go on, on Facebook, please. Coming out supporting support you. Amen. This is with us. Amen. This is her family. This is her family. Her Rose. Amen. What a wonderful turnout. What a way you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself. Amen. I want to talk to you uh, this morning, and uh, you heard the reading of the scriptures, uh, Psalms 10, and it really covers verses 1 through 18. It's a difficult psalm. It really is a difficult psalm to understand and to, uh, to digest uh, the gravity of the writer, the gravity of the writer, what, what he's saying and why. He says the things that he says. Um, it really attacks, this writer really attacks the wicked, the sins of the wicked. And when I got into it, and I said, wait a minute, this, 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 is, a this is a tough song. <laughs> he's, he's calling some things out. And uh, he's asking God to do some things that, uh, you know, that may not be in the makeup of God that time. And so I want you to bear with me. If you have your Bibles, don't close it. But if you don't, then read it later, Psalms 10. And uh, the good thing, if you read Psalms 9, and those on the Facebook, it really gives you a better understanding of Psalms 10. So we're going to talk about that. And so I want to do a little teaching more so than a lot of preaching. Is that all right? Yeah. And so you can understand. You always want to walk out to something. Never come to church not expecting something. Amen. We want to take something with you that you understand that will do you some good. Young people, the same thing that will give you some good in school and where you are. We want something that you can hold on to until the next time you come to church or uh, next time somebody ministers to you about the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Psalm 10. I want to title this song. God will deal with the unrighteous and the righteous. Notice what I said. God will deal with the unrighteous, but he'll deal with the, and deal with the righteous as well. So just for a minute or two, I want to kind of give you a brief overview of what this psalm 
Ted is all about. So according to some scholars, these people studied the Bible, and some ancient manuscripts that were dug up, it's believed that Psalms 9 and 10 might have been composed together as one song, not separately. The author is known, unknown, but many believe that this psalm was written by David, who is the author of Psalms 9, and therefore gives credibility that the fact that he might have written Psalms 10. Can I get a witness? And, 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 and Psalms 10 is a prayer. It's a prayer for the overthrow of the wicked. And the theme focus on why do the wicked succeed? Seems like the more you, the worse you are, the better things get. And the more you try to do good and do right, it seems like the things get worse. And that's what David said. Why? He said uh, in this psalm, you're going to find out why do the wicked succeed? Well, Psalm 9 deals with God never ignores our cries for help. And Psalms 10 focuses on the presence of the widespread injustice, both dealing with the issues and the tone of that time when persecution was at its highest. This psalm, Psalms 10, expresses the injustice that injustice was ramp, rampant in the country. And God seems to take a disinterest. It seems as though God knows the problem Dr. the family laid back and seemed to take an interest and what was happening to his people. Can I get a witness? Amen. So the psalmist now is walking more by sight rather than by faith. But his attitude around has shifted. His attitude has shifted and focused more on the theological facts about God. His prayer is that God will begin to come to those who need help. That's what he's saying. Now he's beginning to say and pray to God, God, we need your help in a time of trouble. Yes. So the psalm is open with this prayer. I want you to hear. And he opens this prayer with a question. Listen to his question. He says, Lord, why are you so far away? Why are you, why are you so far away? I'm going through some stuff, and it seems as though that you're so far away. Why do you hide yourself in times of difficulty? The wicked takes advantage of the poor. And are, and are proud of it. They devise schemes and set traps to catch the innocent. The wicked boast about what they want. They bless the greedy and despise you, Lord. The wicked think they're so important that they don't need you, Lord. Come on. That everything they get to do, they do it on their own. Amen. And their pride, they give no consideration to you. The wicked always seems to prosper. Yes. You know people like that? Yes. Huh? Got the worst attitudes in the world, can't stand people, cuss you out in a heartbeat. But they got it going on. Amen. Right, drive fine cars, living on Sugar Hill. Amen. Living good, you want to know why? But we're going to find out some things. Then they become more proud. And 
and have no intention of keeping your law. They snare at anyone who opposes you. They say to the often nothing will happen to them. Or they say to one another and to those who are without riches and fame that nothing would ever happen to them. We built a secure future. They built a secure future on themselves and, and they intend to enjoy life to its fullest. Yet their mouths are full of curses, lies, and threats. They use their tongues only for evil. Mm. They hide near villages and watch for an opportunity to kill somebody. They murder the innocent and abuse the helpless. They gloat over what they have done and what they are doing. They are like a lion waiting in the bush to pounce on the helpless victims. Like the lion who catches his prey, then drags it into the bush and devours it. Mm. Victims of the wicked don't have a chance. They don't have the opportunity to defend themselves or they don't have the equipment or they don't have the strength to continue to fight against their enemies. They are thrown down and they're crushed under the weight of the attack. The wicked think, God won't do anything to stop me. He closes his eyes to what we do. And looks to the other, and looks the other way. So David answered the prayer, asked the question, "Oh Lord, when will you punish the wicked? When will you remember the helpless? How can the wicked reason the way they do? How can they say God won't do anything to us because we?" don't care or he doesn't care what we do. But Lord, I know you care. This is what David is saying. You see everything the wicked do as well as how the poor are suffering. And I know that you're willing to help them. That's what David is saying. I know you're willing to help them. The poor, the depends on you, little Lord, because they believe and care on what happens in this earthly life. They know you, and they know you are the one who can save them from their enemies. Amen. Stop the wicked from what they're doing against your people, dog. Call them to account for their wickedness and let them taste some of the suffering they have brought on other people. Mm. You are the rightful king. Lord, and will be so forever. Only, and he says, one day the wicked will perish from the land and be no more. In the meantime, listen to the cries of your helpless and the prayers of the afflicted. Give them the help and the courage they need. Yes. Protect the fathers and the oppressed. Listen to their cry. Judge the wicked, Lord. Only then will they stop terrorizing the poor and the helpless. What? Talk to them. We're not going to be long. I just want to say, if you got your Bibles open, stay right there. Dr. Melvin read the first five, but I want to revisit that. I want to talk to you briefly about the song. It opens with, it says, Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked and in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them 
them according to the plot yes. which they have devised for the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounced the Lord. The wicked in his pride, in his pride confidence, does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. Mm. This psalmist again opens with that word, why do you stand and fall? Oh Lord. Here the psalmist is asking the question. Well known to those who follow God. The concern, the anxiety over the seemingly inactivity of God. David says, I cried, my cry went up to you, O Lord, because he has, he has not heard my cry, and I believe that he has withdrawn himself from us. This man felt that God was afar off and was hiding from his people in times of trouble. When his people needed him most, the psalmist says, we believe that God was not answering their prayer. And so David, the psalmist, presents this prayer to the Lord. And he's pleading with the Lord and asking the Lord, Lord, you know what your people are going through. You know how they're feeling. You know the persecution that the Roman government, uh, under the Roman government leadership, is bringing on your people Israel and, uh, and all those who believe in you. You know all this is going on. But yet, Lord, you, you, you're not doing anything. You, you're not answering anybody, any prayer. And your people, God, is praying to you daily, and they're praying to you day and night. But look, and yet, Lord, you have a solid ear. You don't have an ear to hear. You have a solid ear. So the psalmist David is saying, Lord, we need you. And we need you to deal with them right now. Well, you know, and what are you saying, I got to got some mixed emotions about that. I want y'all to talk about me. This man, David, the king of Israel, is asking God to bring vengeance on the people, his enemies. Now the Bible tells us that David was a man of God. Yeah. Am I right about that, those yeah. who know the word? Yeah. That, that, that God looked on David with favor because David believed in God and he trusted God. But here in this psalm, that's why I told you it's a heavy psalm. He's asking for vengeance. How many of you know people who don't like what is going on or somebody who done something to you personally and you wish the worst on them? You know anybody like that? There are people who will do that. There are people who would worse, will wish the worst on other people. They want them to get hurt. They want them to lose their job. They want them to go and even lose their life as necessary because they have done something personally to them. So the Bible says here in this song, David is asking God to avenge his people. Yeah. And that's tough. That, that, that's tough to, to understand. I, I've seen and I've been around people. And I've heard people make comments about other people. She ain't no good. He ain't no good. I wish something happened to him. Or I wish something happened to her. They wish the worst on people. But David says that God, I, I believe in you. I trust in you. But I cannot understand why you're setting back a 
allowing the enemy, the wicked, take advantage of the help, the helpless and the poor. He said, I, 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 can't, I can't understand it. But here, David keeps asking questions. David says, these wicked people are going to be caught up in their own plot. You know, there are people out there will plot against you. You got to be careful about everybody who laughs in your face. Everybody that smiles in your face and calls you sister, and calls you brother, and calls you friend. You got to be careful about that. Because those same people will take a knife and put it in your back. We call them in my neighborhood when I grew up backstabbers. Yeah, I don't mean physically put a knife in your back, but I'm talking about doing things to you that will do you some harm. And David now is praying to God and said, God, these people are plotting against your people. They're plotting against them. But I know, God, that you're going to find a way that they will fall into their own plot. And don't you know that when I came along and some of you have been living long enough to know that when you start doing harm to other people, it'll come back on you? Can I get a witness? Uh, yeah, the Bible says you reap what you sow. Can I get a witness? And the, and, and, and the farmer's mind, reaping and sowing, had to do with planting and growing plots. But in this instance, that reaping and sowing is that you're going, as a metaphor, that you're going to get back what you put out. Or somebody's going to come back after it happens to you and say, I told you so. I knew it was going to happen to you. You because you wish the worst on people. Yeah. Listen, if you can't ask somebody or pray for somebody, if you can't ask somebody or, or, or do something for somebody or help somebody, then leave them alone. If you can't lift a, have a helping hand to lift somebody up when they're going through some things or give them an encouraging word, you need to just leave it alone. Can I get a witness? You are not wishing the worst on any man. Because that shows you insensitivity of who you are. Don't you know you express your makeup of who you are? It tells a lot about who you are when you wish the worst on other people. But when you can look at your enemy or hear something that's been said, Amen. You can go ahead and go and wish them well. You can walk away from situations. It's hard walking away from folks. It's hard to say, look, I'm not going to even touch that. I'm going to leave it alone. I know these young people when they're in school on, during school days, that they got some bullies in their school. Girls and boys. They might even back in the old days take their lunch. I don't know. They don't do that no more. When I came up, we used to pack lunch. They would take our lunch. But now y'all get lunches at the cafeteria. You get your lunch free. But who knows? They may come and get your tray because they say, I'm still hungry. Amen. Yeah. But it's hard for these young people. It's hard for people to walk away and say, I'm not going to bother that. I'm going to leave it alone. It doesn't show how courageous you are, how much man you are, how much woman you are, because you sit, can stand up and get in somebody's face and cuss somebody out and tell them how much you don't like them. You ain't done nothing. You show how ignorant you are. Come on. It takes a man yeah. and a woman, oh, yeah. a godly man yeah. and a godly woman to walk away and say, I'm going to leave that alone. Because you're going to say to yourself, the Lord will one day fight my battle. Can I get a witness? I've seen the wicked fall. I've seen my enemies come before me. I've seen things happen to them, and they don't understand why the things are happening to them. Because the Bible says, touch not.
And if you don't know nothing, if you don't get anything out of this, remember one thing. Don't come against God's people. Yeah, well, man. Don't you do it. Yeah. You're asking for trouble. Just like Israel, don't mess with the Jews. They are God's people. And they're selected by God. If a Jewish person does something to you, pray on it. Wish them well. And go about your business. God will deal with it. But you have no right to deal with it because God selected them as his people. Just as he selected you as his people. The difference between Israel and us is that Israel has an earthly promise. And we, the people of God, have an earthly and heavenly promise. Can I get a witness in here? So watch yourself when you come against God's people. Because something is gonna may happen in your life and you don't understand why. Because God still will fight our battle regardless the time, the place, or the hour, he'll still fight your battle. In other words, I used to hear people say, he may not come when I want him to come, but he's on time. The psalmist David wrote in 46, Psalm 46, 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help. And trouble. Verse 3, when he dealt with the wicked, he said, the wicked boasts of his high desire. He blesses the greedy and denounces the law. You know, there are some folks think that everything that they've done in life is, is, is that they did. They did. They succeeded, they got a nice job. Everything is going well, you know, they can get parties at their house, cookouts, they do everything they want to do, they, they, they arrive. But I'm always mindful of what my mama used to tell me. That same ladder that you're climbing up the rail, that same ladder you can fall coming back down. Can I get a witness? In other words, what you have and what you boast about and how much money you have and everything like and how much fame and power you have and who you know set in, uh, in, in the mayor's office and all that don't mean a hill of beans. That don't mean nothing. Because if you don't acknowledge who God is for the life and the giver of your success, you have not done anything. How many people wake up in the morning and say, Lord, thank you for this another day? How many people say, Lord, thank you for putting food on my table? Take care of my enemies. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like that. I know. See, in his mind, he's asking for a vengeance for his people. But even if God does not move in David's time, God knows, David knows that God will move sooner or later. Yeah. That's why he says, I know that you will avenge my enemies. So we need to understand something. That even though you're looking for these things that happen and somebody and God deals with them, God's only going to deal with them in his time. Yeah. Can I get a witness? And as a matter of fact, we, 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 we always talk about the enemies. But you got to be careful about those who are saved as well. Even in the church. You got some mean church folks. Can I get a witness? Oh yeah, 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 they holy, holy. They, 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 they shout on Sundays and they run around and they praise the Lord, amen. But come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they live like hell. You don't know the difference between the saved and the unsaved. How they act. But a child of God should be different than any other person. You should be able to look at a person and talk to a person and say, I know she's a child of God. Or oh, I know he's a child. He's a, he's a man of God. I can look and hear him speak. I can look and see what he does. I know he's a man of God. But when you can't tell any difference, and you out here doing like the world does, God is going to deal with you too. The righteous. Yes, we all have sinned. We all have come short of God's glory. But God hates sin. But he loves the sinner. Can I say that again for some that don't understand that? God hates sin. He can't, he, he can't stand it. It's, it, 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 it caused up his nostrils. <laughs> he hates it. But he loves the sinner. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to the believer, he never stops loving the believer. He just hates the sin that the believer does. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. In other words, he gets disgusted with us. He gets disgusted with the believer. That word disgusted means I, and I looked it up since I asked him, uh, ask me, the other night said, well, well, wait a minute. Well, I was talking about uh, this, the word disgusted. And it, it, it's a word in which uh, it says that he uh, is disgusted in uh, with feelings, uh, the emotion part of us that we want to do wrong and we should be doing right. God gets disgusted with us. He never hates any of us. Listen. I, I, wanna, I just want you to understand something. I'm taking time out to teach you a little something. God created you in a special way. Can I get a witness? He said in his word, he said, I wish that none of my creation would perish. He said, but turn from their wicked ways and live. Yeah. Don't you know God is waiting on some of us? Yeah. Those who are not saved, he's waiting. And then he's waiting on some of us that are saved yeah. to get it right. Yeah. Some of us are saved, we accept it right, but we still haven't got it right. Yeah. We still go right through the motions. Oh, no. You still want to do the same thing. Yeah. Do, do, do your lecture slide, drink your liquor, do your Whatever you want to do, just like the world does, God said, well, I'm going to still give her and him a little more time. Yeah. I'm not going to act. Don't you know for one sin, God could call every one of us home to glory? He could kill us or God, uh, set death in our life for just one sin. Yeah. 
but his grace and his mercy that he's promised every one of us, he allows us a chance, a second, a third, a fourth chance to get it together. Can I get a witness? So, he gets discussion with even the believer. Another thing I want to point out with the believer, God gets disgusted with our praise and our worship. I'm talking about, I'm talking to saved people now. God gets disgusted with us. How we praise him and how we worship. It's not enough to sing songs to Zion. It's not enough to lift up your voice and say hallelujah. But God is disgusted when it comes to acting like people of God. Our worship is everything. How we approach God is everything. Worship is given even. How you give to the church. That's worship. But true worship is surrendering yourself. Coming to church with a made up mind saying, look, I'm not going to let the devil, I'm not going to let nobody in my household or anybody else stop me from coming in. There might be somebody this morning that came to church this morning and somebody said, why are you going down there well, well, to that dedication? Why, why are you wasting your time going down there? You'll hear about it later. That's the wicked. That's, that's your enemies. And they can be saved people even. Trying to keep you from coming to the house of the Lord. But the devil is a liar. Can I get a witness? You press your way here. And you got here. Because you know how God has been good to you. This religion that I'm talking about. This faith that I'm talking about. It's not for old folks. Just for old people. It's for young people too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Solomon asked the question. Yeah. He says, serve the Lord in the day, you should serve the Lord in the days of our youth. Yeah. That's what Solomon said. You know what happens when we finally get it right with God? We're old. We're 60. We're free. Now we're getting free to die. We're looking at death differently because some of our friends have died. Yeah. And you now you're getting old and your hair is getting gray or getting bald. Yeah. You know, and you come by the, and you come into funerals more than what you realize. When you were young, you went to very little funerals. Now you're getting old and getting skinny. But God said you better get it right. Yeah. Get it right while you're young. You don't have to have that fear. Because I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the light. That you will understand that to be absent from the body is to be present with me. That's what the Lord is telling us. And so we ought to rejoice even in death when somebody who is a believer in Christ Jesus, rather than cry and rather than want to crawl in the casket with them, we ought to rejoice because we know as the people of God that they're not at the body. They're gone. So God said, when you give your heart, your mind, and your soul to me, that's true worship. That's able to come in and say, I may not have any money in my pocket, but I know that the Lord will make a way somehow. How many of y'all have been broke, busted, and disgusted? David does this in the last 
last few verses, I'm going to read them to you, verses 12 through 18. He said, O oh Lord, arise. O oh Lord. David says, crush them. Don't forget the poor or anyone else in need. Why do you let the wicked get away with their contempt for you, God? For they think that God will never call them to an account. I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to stay with me. Lord, you see what they are doing. You have noted each evil act. In other words, he has written it all down. He's what God is writing it down. You know what trouble and grief they have caused. Yeah. Now punish them. Well. Hold on. The poor man trusts himself to you. Yeah. You are known as the helper and the, to the helpless. Break the arms of these wicked men. Go after them until they uh, last, till the last of them are destroyed. Yeah. And David says, the Lord is king forever and ever. Those who follow other gods shall be swiped from his land. Yeah. And he says, Lord, you know the hopes and humble people that serve you. Surely you will hear their cry. And comfort their hearts by helping them. Well, you will be with the orphans and all who are oppressed. Yeah. So the mere earthly man will terrify, be terrified when he has to deal with you. Yeah. The psalmist now is closing the psalm, asking God to avenge those wicked people as he did in the opening verses. But David now moves to another realm. He said that the Lord, I know you hear our cry. Yeah. And I know that you will answer our prayer and deal with those who would inflict pain upon us. Yeah. And I saw by to tell somebody this morning, God may not avenge his servants immediately. But in his good time, he will avenge them completely. Uh, this, this song is telling us that yes, God does not always have to show up and do harm to your enemies. But I want to remind somebody Oh yeah, this morning. That one day, one day. I said one day. Yeah. Every knee shall bow. Yeah. And every tongue shall confess yeah. that he is Lord. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah you're not going to live forever. You're going to die one day. Yeah. Just like I'm going to have to die. We don't know the time nor the hour when this might happen. Can I get a witness? But I tell you, as sure as you're born, you will die. Can I get a witness? I don't know the cause of your passing away will be, but you're going to die. And the Bible tells us that every one of us will have to stand before the judgment. The saved and the unsaved. The wicked and the saved will be judged before God. Can I get a witness? And I stop by to tell you, oh, God is going to open a book. And the book is called the Book of Life. And he's going to start reading your story. Can I get a witness? He's going to say, well, in David's case, David, I heard. against them uh, for 
time to time. You have not done what you were supposed to do. You have not visited the sick and you have not tried to help the helpless. You have not tried to give love and comfort to your brothers and your sisters. But I know, oh God, and David says, but I know that you, God, will turn and help us in our time of trouble. Can I get the witness? So the book of life will have your story. And that story may read those words. And then God may spoke, say to the wicked, oh wicked man that you are, I'm going to put, don't do you to hell. And I stop by to tell you that hell is real. It's not just talked about, but it's a real place. But those who have been saved and covered by the blood of Jesus, even though we came short to his glory, I can say that because 
when I look upon my life, I, I wasn't always pure. I done some things, said some things. I was mean as a junkyard dog. You caught me when I was real young. I didn't like what you said. I'll tell you, I'll be up all in your face, ready to go side your head. That was how mean I was. I was mean to somebody. I, I was going to hit you behind you. You wasn't looking. I tried to hit you behind your head. But thank be to God that God spared my life. I should have been dead a long time ago. Drugs and alcohol should have been dead a long time ago. But I'm here by his grace and by his mercy to tell somebody how good God is. Stop trying to do things yourself. Try, stop trying to fight this thing. Drug addiction. Stop trying to fight poverty. Being broke. All that stuff. Don't know how what's going to happen tomorrow. Jesus said, because you're not concerned about tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. If you walk with God day by day, God will take care of you day by day. Can I get a witness? So just put your faith in the Lord. If you don't know him, try him this morning. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. But you got to believe in your heart that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down from heaven, walked among the men, healing the sick, the blind, see Jesus Christ, born of a virgin Mary. Jesus Christ went to the cross, was hung, crucified, he died. He put him in a bar or two, he stayed there all day Saturday. And on Sunday morning, he was raised by his father. He was raised by the power of God, his father. If you believe in your heart, that he died, that he lived, he died, and he raised again. The Bible said, thou shalt be saved. Ain't no bells and no whistles are going off. Ain't no uh, explosion going around your house with fireworks. None of that happened. God said, it's like a peaceful feeling that comes over you. Is there one? Is there one that want to give their life to Christ this morning? Is there one on Facebook or YouTube? Amen. You can pray the sinner's prayer. You say, Lord, I've tried to do it all by myself. I, I, I've done everything big enough to do. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I know that I, I don't have the power. I know I don't have those, the resources. I don't want to have the means. And I need to put my trust in you, Lord. God, would you come and see about me? Give your life to Christ. And God will come and see about you. Is there one? Is there one? You don't have to come up front. All you gotta do is raise your hand. All you gotta do is raise your hand. Is there one? Then if we have a safe house, give the Lord a hand praise. If you know God, if you know where you would end up, when you leave this body, and you know you're gonna end up in glory. Rather than being doomed, damnation to hell, you know you're going to be with the Lord and you ought to praise him for grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Let's give God another praise. That old song says, somebody, he's knocking at your